Hi, this is Dr. Bernstein of Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes University. Uh, today's session is going to it will be one of four on appetite suppressing medications. The bulk of my patients, my new patients, uh, have been overeaters. In fact, the bulk of our population, I would guess, is made up of overeaters. Um, we're going to, and this is probably the major cause of type 2 diabetes, but I find that even type 1 diabetics uh, are usually overeating and craving carbohydrates. Uh, this problem of overeating is very difficult to deal with, and I've had to use uh, a variety of medications to control it. Uh, the star for these four sessions is Samantha Flynn, mother of John of James Flynn, uh, who uh, is encyclopedic in her knowledge of the substances we use to treat overeating. Um, now, uh, what's a, what other categories? Do we so have? now the antidepressants alone, okay. um, which is an Welbutrin, is really um, the main antidepressant that um, helps with weight loss um, and there's three different types there's the Wellbutrin and then there's the Wellbutrin SR and the Wellbutrin XL okay now which one is most effective so the the fastest acting is just the Wellbutrin okay and that that's the most effective it's it's the most fast acting. I see. See, so, for me, the, the extended release, which is the XL, worked beautifully for me. Okay. So, uh, so it depends, it depends on the person. depends on when the right. person is overeating. Right. If the person is overeating between dinner and bedtime, you want the rapid acting, uh, which is just maybe a few hours prior to dinner. Uh, you don't want it to stop you from eating dinner, but you want it to stop you from overeating. And you take that three times a day. So you can take it before breakfast, you can take it before lunch, and you can take it before dinner. For those people who have problems three times a day. But right. some people uh, right. only have a problem between dinner and bedtime. Right. But uh, the, the Wellbutrin SR, which is the sustained release, um, you, t you take it only two times a day, okay. no matter what. Okay. Um, and then the extended release is once a day. Okay, so the confusing uh, uh, sub, uh, uh, titles for these uh, variations. Right. Um, now, uh, there was another uh, yeah. antidepressant that we, we just realized. Yeah, that we haven't tried yet. Right. Which I think I want to try. <laughs> and that was what? The Effexor. Effexor, Effexor right. seems to be, um, or I'm told that it's effective, and that's once a day. Um, it's an SNRI. Uh, so that's, it's a serotonin and norepinephrine re reuptake uh, inhibitor. inhibitor. Right. It works on two neurotransmitters. Right. Now, I think the Wellbutrin works on three. No? No. And there's one that works on dopamine also. The Wellbutrin is an atypical drug, and it's different from all the other antidepressants. Okay. Um, it's actually, um, the, the class is a amino ketone. Okay. So it's different than any other of the antidepressants. Okay, now... There's one that we've been looking at uh, that works on norepinephrine, dopamine, and serotonin. Do you know which one that is? That's the Effexor, I think, isn't oh, it? That, yeah. that would be, okay. Yeah. So it's more than an SNRI. It's an SNDRI. No, I think it's an SNRI. I, could, I, I don't know of another one that's an SSRI. That... Well, uh, so that, it's not important. The point is that... Uh, Effexor is something to try right? Uh, if you can't find anything else, like these few other drugs. And also, with all of the Wellbutrins, um, they, not only do they help with you know weight loss or um, 
at least not gaining weight, there's no sexual dysfunction or side effects right. when it comes that, to the Wellbutrin. That, that's important because the original serotonin reuptake inhibitors right. like uh, Prozac uh, frequently cause sexual dysfunction. Uh, and the Wellbutrin has actually been used to restore sexual mm -hmm. function in people who are taking uh, SSRIs. Right. Okay. So what uh, <clears throat> other category do we have? So the effects are we talked about. That's right. once a day. Um, it also helps with hot flashes. Oh, my. I didn't realize that. Yeah, okay. that's actually how I discovered, like, that it could help with the weight loss. Okay. Um, my OBGYN also mentioned that it will help with hot flashes if you're... Um, you know, premenopause right. or menopause. It can help with both and depression and anxiety. Okay. So it's so, kind of a... Okay. Yeah. It helps. Uh, exactly. Um, and I think the only thing we really didn't cover were the supplements or the... Oh, wait, no. The colonopin, which I just mentioned the other day. Oh, yes. This is a brand new thing. It's an anti-anxiety drug. Um, it's also used to treat seizures. Okay. So, and we haven't tried it on anybody yet. Uh, well, oh, me. We, we, they tried it on you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I went on vacation and you typically I'll always gain weight on when I'm on a trip and I lost weight. Okay. And I, I contribute it to the Klonopin. Okay, that's spelt with a K, isn't yes. it? Yes. Um, yeah, and uh, the generic name is uh, clonazepam. Right. Yeah. Right. So, <clears throat> and it, it, it has. It's been working for me. It's, for whatever reason, it's helped me with the appetite. Now, uh, many anxiolytic drugs like clonopin are controlled substances. You're right. So, in certain states, uh, the physician has to uh, report it on a computer to a state agency every time he prescribes it. Um, New York, uh, for sure. Right. And also Colorado. Okay. We have a lot of licenses because <laughs> my patients come from all over, and uh, I see them briefly, but we then treat them over the telephone and need a license. Um, let me just think a minute. Uh, another problem with controlled substances is that in certain states you may not have automatic renewals. So where some medications you can prescribe once and say refill for a year, right. you cannot do that with controlled substances um, in some states. Um, <clears throat> and one of the last things were, when we talked about this, actually when I first started working here in the office, were the, um, the supplements that were initially being used to right. treat, the, yeah. yeah. There are, uh, there's been a lot of use of herbal supplements, right. many of which are worthless, uh, but uh, they bring a lot of money over the internet. Uh, big sales, huge mm -hmm. volume, and uh, most of them don't work. But I uh, did a big study on this uh, about 20 years ago, and we still had the results on my computer, and there are a few things that do work. Well, I think you had said that um, Hootia initially worked. Right. Now, th this is very interesting. It is. Uh, I'll tell you about Hootia. Hootia is... Uh, a cactus-like plant that blow, grows, I believe, in Africa, uh, in the deserts. And uh, when uh, endogenous people uh, ran out of food and had to go out hunting, uh, they would uh, walk past uh, a hoodia plant, and they knew that they could cut off uh, a chunk of the cactus and... Uh, suck on it or chew it uh, while they're hunting game to uh, prevent hunger. <clears throat> and uh, about 20 years ago, it uh, 
uh, found its way to North America, to the USA, and was found to be effective in curbing hunger. And I tried it on my patients, and I found that it worked mm -hmm. for perhaps half the people I tried it on. But it became so popular, especially since the advent of the Internet, uh, uh, <laughs> with Internet sales, that uh, the importing of it overwhelmed the supply and people started, or suppliers started, mixing it with other substances to stretch their availability. And eventually, uh, many phony hoodias came out. Right. And, watered down versions. And watered down versions and so, and so on. So here I was using it for a while, and then it stopped working, be <coughs> uh, probably because we were no longer getting pure hoodia. How it stands today, I have no idea. My guess is that it is probably impossible to get the pure stuff, but I'm not certain. Uh, what other... Oh, yes, there was also Garcinia. Cambogia, right, which right. I think had the same sort of story and wasn't very effective. I tried it myself. Right, and uh, there are people promoting it on television right. and so on, but it really is not uh, effective anymore. And even when we were getting the pure stuff... It wasn't very effective. It worked for a few people. Nothing compared to Hoodia. Right. What other uh, supplements are there? Um, we didn't have a ton of supplements because there are so many now that promote like weight loss and and really none of them have been really effective. I've tried tons of them. I have a, a friend in Texas that that's tried tons of them, and they're just they don't they're so, not really effective. Right. So there's a lot of uh, phony promotion right. of supplements uh, for weight loss, and uh, uh, of course there's also the phony promotion of agents that could work where the uh, physicians are not advocating low carbohydrate diets, right. so they don't do any good, even though they could do a lot of good. Right. And the last thing I think, um, which is something that you recently came discovered, um, was the oxytocin, the inhaled oxytocin. Oh, oh yes, yes. There have been uh, articles in. Uh, uh, the journals, mm -hmm. and the one that I gave right you yeah. was, uh, read the journal and the date. Um, let's see. Uh, diabetes, dot, diabetes journals. It okay, doesn't... so this is the journal Diabetes. <clears throat> yeah. And is there a date on that article? Um, there is no... The oh, bottom. wait, hold on a minute. Let me see. 2013. Ah. April 2013. Okay, so in the journal uh, Diabetes in April 2013... Uh, someone uh, discovered that inhaled oxytocin, which is also called pitocin, right. it's used to stimulate labor uh, at the tail end of pregnancy, uh, also suppresses appetite. Do you want the title? Yeah. Oxytocin yeah. reduces reward-driven food intake in humans. Okay. So, and this was a really good article. Okay. And actually, Dr. Um, Gerber, who came in to um, visit, with us. visit with us, yeah, he knew, like, all the doses. He, he has a lot of information well, on uh, this. Well, any, any uh, uh, obstetrician. I think he had tried it, but uh, he, wa he wasn't an OBGYN, no, I don't no, think. No, no, no. So he had discovered, so we, we actually had a doctor who spent a week or so with us. Right. And... He had been already trying inhaled oxytocin uh, for control of appetite right. in his patients, and he had success. Right. And did we cover everything? I think so. Great. Yeah, that well, was fast. Well, thank you so much. Time flies. <laughs> okay, I guess I could turn this off. Well, thank you for watching. I'm sorry that it took so long. This session was mainly for physicians, but it's an, it is a very important session because you really cannot successfully treat diabetes or pre-diabetes if uh, the patient is overeating.
Uh, before you sign off from this session of Diabetes University, take a look at my book, Diabetes Solution, which uh, you can view at the site listed below, or you can purchase from any online bookstore. Also, visit my monthly seminars, teleseminars. Uh, the site for getting these free seminars is listed below. Um, you can also uh, join the Diabetes Forum where you can ask questions to other diabetics who have read my book and have been using it. And one last thing is if you go to the teleseminar, you can ask questions which I will answer, uh, if not the same month that you asked the question, uh, within a month or two thereof. Thanks.